Second and two, they've got a really good chance here of just running whatever they want. They can even take a shot if they want to, but Tua doesn't see anything, and he runs into a sack, and he loses it! And Brown picks it up! Big man with ball, and he is gone for the touchdown! Holy cow, this defense has been ferocious today! What's up, guys? Welcome back to the Panthers franchise. We are coming off of that win against the Giants, and something I forgot to do so far, and you guys are probably gonna get mad at me about this, or you maybe haven't just haven't told me. Forgot to check in on the season stats for everybody. So let's go ahead and let's do that right now. Let's do a quick pickup of where the league is sitting. We'll come back to the Panthers afterwards. I wanna check out on the league as a whole first. All right, so here we go. Jared Goff is leading the league in what looks to be quite a few things. We had 1,684 yards passing, 15 touchdowns to only two interceptions, 72% completion. Geno Smith, 1,640, 11 touchdowns, six interceptions. Patrick Mahomes, 1,640, 19 touchdowns, two interceptions. Desmond Ritter, uh, I guess, is a good quarterback in this game. 1,567. 13 touchdowns, four interceptions. Derek Carr, 14 and seven. There is Deion Boyd, 15, 22, 10 touchdowns, five picks. So he did get a few touchdowns during the bye weeks that we simmed. During the weeks that we simmed to give him a few more touchdowns. He is sitting right now at a 91.7 quarterback rating. Anthony Richardson right below him, 11 for seven. Sam Darnold is back with the Jets and he's starting and he's... <laughs> <laughs> oh boy coming full circle here sam darnold returning to the new york jets and is now their starting quarterback with a 1478 yard season with 13 touchdowns and five interceptions a quarterback rating of 116.1 so as i've said to you guys before and i've probably said this i mean i'm not the first to say it i'm sure you guys have known it beforehand this game with the sim is primarily set up off of playbooks. It's unfortunate, it sucks. And I tried to, to sort of contort my sliders this year to try and keep things within reason of the rest of the league so that way it actually felt special when you had a really good season. So Sam Darnold here, 13 touchdowns, five interceptions with the Jets, 75% completion. And then you have guys like Ritter, who um, apparently are a good quarterback. And then you come down here and you have a guy like Lamar Jackson, who has seven touchdowns, five interceptions. And it's just it just goes to show that this, this game is primarily based off of what playbook you have and what scheme you run in the sim. And it's it's really it really sucks because it takes away a lot of immersion. Maybe this is why I subconsciously didn't even look at the stats yet. I don't know. But it's it's a it's an issue, and it's something that I don't know if will ever be fixed. Some of these do make sense, right? Eight touchdowns, eight picks for Will uh, Mayo Man Le Levis. Um, the Vikings absolutely sucking. I mean, that's been a thing with the game for probably five or six years. I'm not sure if anybody, like you, could be a co bad quarterback, but if you are a quarterback for the Vikings with Justin Jefferson and Jordan Addison, I don't feel like this is your stat line. You know what I'm saying? It's like. That doesn't really make a lot of sense to me. Uh, Jaden Daniels, five touchdowns, four interceptions through seven games. Right, that makes sense. Uh, it's just weird things, man. It's just weird, weird things. So I I don't know. That's just, just wanted to share that with you guys. Going over to the rushing, Josh Jacobs. I swear to God, this man is leading in rushing every year, no matter where he is. This is literally just ratings based, I think. DeAndre Swift right behind him. ETN Jr. has seven touchdowns on the season. Wow. Jags fans would probably love to see that in real life. Saquon Barkley, four touchdowns for him, 450 yards. Isaiah Pacheco, Jonathan Brooks. He was having a good season before the injury. And if you guys don't remember from the last uh, episode, Brooks is done. He tore his pectoral in the last game. He is out for the season, 27 weeks. So he will not be back until next year at the earliest, which really sucks because he was having a good year. 4.6 yards on average, four touchdowns, 413 yards. 
Jalen Warren now with the Chargers. And he is their starting running back. 411 yards, five touchdowns. Kenneth Walker. So some common names you'll see here. And we'll just go down the list a little bit farther here. And I think we'll count that as good. Over to the receiving area, Monra St. Brown. Leading the league in receiving yards, 626. He has six touchdowns. Chris Olave, Tyler Lockett. Yeah, I don't think he's leading the league in everything. He gives up too many yards. And I don't mean gives up like it's like lost behind the line of scrimmage. The guy just falls down when he's got 20 yards of space in front of him, which I can respect from a health standpoint. But it, it's got to be infuriating. Watch that happen when you probably could have another 10, 15 yards almost every time he catches the ball. Garrett Wilson right behind him. Brian Thomas Jr. coming on with Jacksonville. 447 yards, two touchdowns. Devontae Adams still with the Raiders, of course, in our world. Jerry Judy not completely sucking in this franchise. And then there's Jonathan Mingo, who appears to have benefited from some of the sim games because he has definitely not been doing this in the games we're watching. 34 catches, 435 yards, four touchdowns. So some very different faces this year, which I do like to see. Last couple of years, you could probably throw out 10 names and eight of them would probably be at the top of the board for these stats. At least I could. I don't know how much you guys really paid attention to it in your own franchises, but it was pretty easy to know who was going to be good when it came to the stats. So I do like seeing the differences and seeing different names up here. But here again, the playbook's working against teams. There's no way... Jeff Jefferson, after seven weeks, is having this stat line. That's just not going to happen. You know, we saw this guy having a tremendous season with flipping Nick Mullins, Josh Dobbs. Um, who else even? There was Jaron Hall. I mean, there was so many different names at the Vikings quarterback last year. For this guy to have this kind of a stat line is just completely unrealistic. But we are dealing with it because that is, well, what we have to deal with. We can't. Okay, well, I was going to show you the defensive stats. But apparently Madden broke the game again. And every time I go to look at the defensive stats, it, um, it crashes. So I, I guess we can just look at this page here. And you can see that Greg Russo is leading the league in sacks. Ed Oliver behind him. And then, hey, look at that. Draymond Jones with five of his own right behind him. Interceptions. It's Arnold from Detroit, McDuffie, and then Ward from Cleveland. And then tackles. It's Clark, Cooper, and Tranquil. So if you guys have been seeing that happen to your own franchises, don't worry. It's not you. It's not your game. It's just EA. How fitting. Anyway. Now that we saw the stats, it is time for us to move on to the next part of this episode. And I am going to I think I'm going to sim this week. We might do the Dolphins. I don't want to watch the Bucks again. We already watched one of them this year. That's one thing that I'm going to try to do. Unless it's a huge matchup at the end of the season, I'm not going to repeat an opponent during the season. I just... I'm trying my best here, guys, to, to try and alleviate how many games we're really watching and trying to get through as many seasons as possible. So we might end up uh, simming a couple of weeks here again today. I don't know yet. I'm just going to feel it out and just sort of see what I think. Right now, we just came off that win with the Giants. I want to get past the Bills, and then we'll see where things are with the Dolphins. Otherwise, we might be going all the way to Week 10. I don't know. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and do the mini games, and then we are going to pick things up after the sim. All right, so we made it past the game and we won. We beat the Bills 28 to 24. I was rather surprised that we did, but I'm gonna take the win. So we are now sitting at four and three. We are officially above 500. And this week we have the Dolphins who are sitting at four and two. They're coming to town. I realized after the skip that we have a bye coming up after the Bucks game. So I think we're gonna watch the Dolphins and then we'll skip past the bye and we'll pick things up after the bye week in week 11. This week, we also have our scouting national focus, so I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to get that set right away. So now we have all of our stuff set up for the scouting. Um, I am very intrigued by this year's draft class, and I'm hoping that we can unlock a lot of stuff here for the prospects so we know quite a bit about them. There hasn't been a lot of stuff given to them quite yet, but we will start to see these jump. 
can see here, the some of the strong safeties are up to 60%. Some of the D tackles are up to 40%. So we are going to really start to learn more about these guys in the next few weeks. Uh, probably between, probably next video or maybe the video after that, because they'll start to get their rolls for extra percentage unlocked. So I'm looking forward to that quite a bit. Taking a look at the Dolphins, Tunga Vailoa, 90 overall now. Um, still, still playing, right? No, no question about it in this in this world. Devin A Chain, I'm pretty sure I said that wrong. I don't know. I hear his name said three different ways from Sunday every time I talk to somebody. They do have our old running back, Chuba Hubbard, though. And it looks like this offense, of course, is still run through Tyreek Hill. Jalen Waddell has turned into a pretty good player here. Superstar development, 89 overall. Traylon Burks from the Titans is here. And then they also drafted Ty Davis this year out of Florida. 5'11, 192. He's a 71. Janu Smith is the starting tight end. Durham Smith is also here. They have a rookie tight end in Jim Weeks there, but he will probably not be seeing the field. Offensive line, not the best. Okay, definitely not the best. They have a couple of average pieces, a couple of below average. And then defensively, Zach Seiler and rookie Isaiah Duval out of Illinois. 76 overall, so he will be, of course, starting TJ Slayton in the middle. Not a very strong interior of the defensive line. Jalen Phillips on the outside, Roberts and Brooks in the middle, and then Bradley Chubb on the other side, along with Chop Robinson. Curious to see how they're going to work that going into the future, if they're going to hold on to Chubb, or if eventually it's going to be turned over fully to Chop Robinson, who's off to a really good start. Second year, 81 overall. Ramsey still in the secondary, but he is injured right now. So he is not going to be playing this week. He is completely gone. MC Altair, he is gone for the season. Big loss for the Dolphins there. So it's going to be Kendall Fuller, Cater Co Co Kohu, probably again butchered it. And then we'll end up seeing maybe Bobby Cooper, rookie corner, 71 overall. And then at the safety positions, Javon Holland and another rookie, Jamie Reynolds, who is in fact an X-Factor, 5'10", 206, 77 overall, but he is also out. He is out this week with an ACL sprain. So that means we are going to end up seeing Jaron Curse at the other strong or other safety position along with Holland. So a couple of key injuries for the Dolphins. And I just realized A Chain is hurt as well. So it's going to be Chuba Hubbard, our former running back, going against us. And then before we get to the game, we have to talk about the running back position. Now, I don't think we have enough firepower to go off and get somebody like David Montgomery, even though he's 28, that overall is really going to hold up his value. I don't feel as if Tony Pollard would be a great addition for us. Um, 28 years old. I just, I don't know, man. Plus, he's already there with Tennessee. I, I just don't really feel like it. Tyler Algier is very interesting to me. He has been a very, very good fill-in player for the Falcons over the years and he has actually carried the load for a few quite a few games and has shown that he can do it the only thing I'm questioning is will he be able to step into our system being a power back when we already have one with Judge and be able to handle the duties of what Brooks was doing for us or somebody a little bit more elusive 86 speed 89 acceleration he is definitely not somebody that is going to be more keen to running through the zone deep or for zone blocking and one person that I keep coming back to when I'm looking through this list here is Tank Bigsby. Now, there are other options, a lot of other options, but this is where I am coming into it with Bigsby, right? He's young. He's 24, of course. Most of these guys that I'm looking at are 24, 25, guys like Jerome Ford, maybe Bucky Irving or Buck Irving, whatever his name is from the Bucks. But I don't think we should be doing interdivision trades. I just, yeah, my Vikings like to do it, but I, I just don't think it's very, it's very realistic. So I'm not going to be doing that. But Bigsby has some potential right now he's behind Travis Etienne who as we just saw before has seven touchdowns is well in place of the running back duties in Jacksonville he is also still pretty young himself I feel like this could be a good fit for us ratings wise 90 speed 92 acceleration he has he does have the ability to to lay some power down with trucking at 81 stiff arm at 78 but Juke move being an 85 and change of direction being 86 are big to me. Um, I do think that this might be a really good play for us to bring him in. I wish he was a little bit better as a receiving back. So I'm going to see if there's anybody else that really jumps out to me. In order for us to try and bring in a running back, I feel like we need to 
get some money and we also need to bring in some more draft pieces or trade pieces and somebody left this comment i believe last video maybe the video before and it makes sense i mean adam thielen right now he's just passed he's passed right <laughs> he's we got guys in the wings i want to see overton more i i actually want to see some of the other guys too a little bit more i want to see what we have in these younger players and Thielen is 35. We know he's not coming back after this season. The Cowboys' number one need is a wide receiver. They have the money to take him on, and they are the top of their division as well. They are, I think they're five and two right now. Yeah, they're they're actually a pretty good team in this game. So we are gonna go ahead and we're gonna see if they'll take Adam Thielen on for a six round pick. Yes, it's only a six because the man is 35. He's a 77 and they don't even have a fifth rounder so there's no way i would even try to get a fourth rounder out of anybody for adam thielen so we're gonna see if we can get a six round pick i think that is fair and we'll we'll see what happens and they take the trade so adam thielen is now a dallas cowboy and we're gonna get a six round pick this year in exchange for him with us being four and three now i almost wonder if we should try to make a play for a, a better running back uh, jerome ford is here 5 10 2 10 25 years old he is definitely going to be a better fit for us receiving back wise as well than that of bigsby even though i do prefer bigsby jerome ford has been a pretty good relief guy for the browns every time chubb goes down they can rely on him to to, to carry the rock and i feel like maybe we can try and give him a shot 93 carrying 85 juke 92 excel um he ha he does have not the best stamina and toughness Injury is not the worst, um, but I do appreciate the 68 overall receiving back because right now we do not have anybody above like a 63, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. And that does hurt us in some situations, especially out of the backfield. So I'm going to see what we can do to get Ford here and maybe we can make something happen. I'm going to see if the Browns would take this as a trade offering. One of their top three needs is a defensive tackle. Ashawn Robinson, now that he is in a 4-3 for us, is sort of behind a few people. Whereas with the Browns and their 4-3, he actually would become a starter for them. He would be tied for their best defensive tackle in Dalvin Tomlinson. And as well, just to, ex to exchange Ford, so that way they still have a running back room to rely on behind Chubb, I could send over Miles Sanders in return. It would help us get rid of a couple of contracts from the last regime that maybe we're just not a very big fan of. I know I'm not. It'll get us up to $4 million in cap room. It gives the Browns another running back to, to count on and a starting defensive tackle and gives us Jerome Ford. So we'll see if they will take this. I do have to throw in Hoosman because they were negative cap room. So we're gonna see if they'll just do this two for two trade. And they do, it works out. Hoosman, I'm probably just gonna cut or put on the practice squad for now. But we end up moving on from Ashawn Robinson and Miles Sanders. We're gonna bring in Jerome Ford to be the starting running back for the rest of the season. And then Hoosman just to make sure that the deal went through since Madden doesn't let us, you know, take on contracts or anything like that to make things work. You gotta sort of work around it a little bit. And that's what I did here. So now it's time for us to finish this weekly strategy. And then it's time to take on the Miami Dolphins. So this week we are gonna go with medium pass. It makes the most sense considering the type of offense the Dolphins should be running with Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle. On defense, I'm going to go right to the run. We're going to see if we can get Ford off on a good start, get him in the run game, get him involved. And then our weekly game plan goals here. We definitely need to get after Tua. Um, allow 30 points, or I think we can stick to 20 points or less here. Come on, have a little faith. Um, we're going to go for 350 on offense and then win turnover battle. I think that is very important and something we don't necessarily always do. So let's aim for that this week. So there we have it. I'm going to go ahead, get everything set up for the roster with the new players. I'm going to do this, do the mini games, and then I will see you guys for the Dolphins game. We are going to be starting on offense today. First and 10 here for us. Dion Boyd under center from the 29. Takes a snap. Let's it go underneath. It's Overton running over a defender, and he'll get across the 40 to the 42 yard line. A big play there to open things up. Get this offense in a nice little rhythm to start and we'll go play action oh going deep and it's incomplete he was looking for overton right away 
after Overton, you know, getting into the game plan more this week. And Boyd trying to do his best to get him involved right off the bat. Second and 10, a little pitch play to Ford. And Ford works his way to the corner, and he'll end up turning that into four. It looked like it might have been a, no gain or a loss, but luckily he's able to find a little bit of a crease there. And now it's going to be third and six. Boyd with the snap, quick pass over the middle, completed, and a first down. It's Overton again making the tough catch in traffic across midfield. And so far, I'm liking what Boyd and Overton are working together. I, I, I want to see that. You know, I want to see Overton become that guy. That's why we drafted him so high. As oh, under pressure, and Boyd, no, he fumbled it. What the hell are we doing? Right off the bat, the Dolphins' defense gets back, forces the pressure, and we're going to have a turnover. Boyd gets the ball knocked out of his hands from Siler. And, yeah, just not a good, not a good look at all. And here comes Tua to take over for Miami. We had a really good start to this game. And then a simple mistake turns into this. They're going to start. Oh, my God, what a play by Thompson. He shoots through the gap, and he sacks the quarterback before he can even finish either handing the ball off or performing the play action. A big loss of four. And let's see what Miami does here. Quick snap. Tua stepping up in the pocket. He's going to take off with it. He's got plenty of space inside the 15, finally sliding down at the 14. A big pickup there of about 20 yards. And Miami going to get all those yards back and much more. Waddle in motion. Snap. Play action. Tua jumps it off to Hubbard, and he is too close to the sideline. He's going to be shoved out by Fuller. And they'll hand it off now to Chuba. And he's got a nice little crease off the left side. He'll get it down to the seven. They'll mark him actually at the six, third and two. They're going to go empty set here, well, four wide, I should say. Try to spread us out thin. Tua takes a snap under pressure, fires it to the end zone. Easy touchdown, Waddle. They ran the slant route right over the top where the blitz came from. And as long as Tua can stand poised and deliver it, it should be open, which it was. Miami takes advantage of the early turnover and makes it a 7-0 game. So we are back on offense. Each team has had a punt since. Last drive out, our defense got a sack. It was Draymond Jones getting his sixth of the season to end their drive as Boyd takes a shot over the middle into double coverage. And luckily, it hits the turf. He was trying for the big play. Did not work. We'll go back to the drawing board here on second. I formation, handoff to Judge. Judge getting around the corner to the outside and he'll get the first down. Good blocking up front, good vision from Judge to stick with it, trust that the edge would be there. And he'll get it us he'll get us across midfield to the 49. Boyd quick snap. Got to throw and he doesn't. I don't know how we let that blitz get through so quickly there. Apparently we're just not blocking. But we once again put ourselves behind the stick, second and 15. That's got to be encroachment, right? There's no way that's on us. And, yep, it's Isaiah Duval, the rookie defensive end, getting called on the neutral zone infraction. Going to give us a free five yards, put us back to second and ten. Sort of erase that sack. As Boyd back to pass. Over the middle again. It is completed. It's Mingo down inside the 30. We saw Mingo's stats earlier as well. He's been our best receiver so far this season. He's got four touchdowns. As he makes the catch there, puts us sort of in that fringe area, the red zone fringe area. And now it's play action. Boyd going to the end zone, and it's incomplete. He was looking for Overton. I don't know if the route was just, the, the throw was off center or if the route was ran wrong, but either way, there was no chance of that working. Second and 10 now, once again. Hand off to Ford, right up the middle. He is tracked down by the defense after a gain of four. 
so far he's had nothing but four yard runs <laughs> i mean it's a decent average so i'm not it's just funny how every run has been for four yards exactly and there's overton with another catch slant route over the middle gets us down to the 11. jalen phillips there i believe was injured on that play there was a whistle at the end now well, first and 10 for us judge back in the backfield in the i formation Gordon in motion. That's going to go right to Judge. And that time, though, Miami was ready for it. Was not going to let that edge get sealed off. And Kamara comes through. It's going to be a loss of two. Nice job from the defense to see and recognize that they've already seen that today. Now Boyd coming in the empty set. A little play act or a pump fake and tries to go underneath. But it falls incomplete. It's Sanders, the tight end. Second time this this game that he has dropped a pass. Not that that would have really amounted to anything, but just something to note. As Boyd to the end zone, and it is caught! And it's Jonathan Mingo in double coverage through contact, holding on. And we are going to tie this game up. I like the trust factor there from Boyd to give Mingo a shot. It pays off, and we'll tie this thing at 7. First and 10 for Miami. Hubbard in motion. Big drop back for Tua. He puts it underneath to Hubbard, and it's going to go for three. Not a lot of room to have there. We wind towards the end of this first quarter. Once again, Hubbard in motion, this time to the right. Empty backfield now for Tua. And he's going to go down. It's Jones again getting back there. Second time today, he's put the pressure on Miami he had help that time but he is what initiated it for sure that'll end up bringing us to the end of the first quarter so far defense has been doing its job like yes they gave up a touchdown but it was after a fumble that you know put us in a very tough spot defensively and um, since then though they have really sort of calmed down they've been able to get some pressure on Tua, as you just saw there and our offense looks like it has a little bit of a rhythm now. So let's see if we can continue this here in the second. Hill in motion to the outside. Got to watch for that. He's gonna, He tried to look for him, but he wasn't open. He runs right into Wanham for his third sack of the day. DJ Wanham pushing him back and ending the drive for Miami. The pressure is getting there quickly, and I'm loving it. We have actually have pretty good field position, too, after the punt, all the way at the 38. And we're going to start with a handoff to Ford. And Ford pushing his way forward for five. Hey, look at that. Got more than four. We'll take it. Second and five. 89 yards so far for us today. We have pushed Miami back a few times on sacks. They're technically in net yardage negative right now. Boyd, all the time in the world, but of course it runs out. He fumbles it again. Are you kidding me, Boyd? Oh... That is the second time this game that this man has run diagonally backwards, lost us 20 yards, and then fumbled the ball as soon as he had contact. I am just, I'm starting to get really irritated. We're letting the Dolphins continue to keep up with us and keep scoring because of our lack of awareness right now when it comes to ball protection. And now Miami once again has an absolutely beautiful opportunity to score again. Tua is going to throw this one away. Nobody open. Pressure was coming. He's already taken three sacks. You know he doesn't want to take a fourth already. Well, at all, really. But the way this pass rush is going, he might be seeing them a few more times today, hopefully. Tua again under pressure. He's able to get rid of it. It's batted away. And the defense does its job again. And they'll force a field goal at least, which in this case is as good as a three and outs given the circumstances. All right, so we're back down by three. We need Boyd to figure it out here because we can't keep playing the way we've been playing. Hand off to Ford. Trying to look for the gap, but it just never opened up. He's going to get pushed. Well, not really pushed back. They'll mark him with forward progress at the line of scrimmage. Second and 10, but you saw it there. Five for 17, and it's not been the best day 
for the run as Boyd now is going to step up and run with it himself. Please slide, please slide, please slide. Thank you. Huge 22-yard run from Boyd. And he will get us to midfield. And he slid, so I'm happy for that. Maybe we should start having him slide when he's going to take a sack. All right, like, let's, just, let's just call it what it is. Underneath to Mingo. He makes the catch and appears, yes, he's got enough for the first. Boyd has been great as long as he doesn't have pressure. As soon as pressure comes, though, he seems to crumble. And we need to get him out of that because if he wants to be a long-term starter in this league, you got to be able to handle the pressure. And there goes Ford. Looked like he may have been able to spring loose, but the defense rallied quick enough to contain it to a seven-yard run. Second and three, and let's see what we do here. We got a little bit of an open playbook. Boyd with the snap. He's going to dump it off to Ford, and it goes for a loss of four. That was incredible. That was a great play. I'm not being sarcastic at all. Okay, third and seven. Sanders is in motion. Boyd takes a snap. Under pressure, finally throws it, and it's completed to Overton. Two receivers in the area. As long as one of them comes down with it, I'm happy. And Overton does that, reaching up, making the catch in that little soft pocket of the zone, and it's going to move the chains for us, get us inside the 25. He sort of bailed Boyd out there. That wasn't a great throw. I'm not sure why there was two receivers in the same area, so one of those guys messed up a little bit. As Boyd throws it to Sanders, who is able to hold on. He'll get two yards on the play. I'd love to see us get ourselves a touchdown here, guys. Sanders in motion. Boyd throws it left side. It's completed somehow through the hands of the defender to Peoples-Jones for a first down. Right now, these receivers sort of bailing Boyd out with these very risky throws. And Boyd with another one over the middle, and it is caught for the touchdown. Garon Overton with the slant routes, and we are going to take the first lead of the day. Talk about a big game for Overton. He does a little inside zig route, throws the defender off, buys him just enough space to make the catch and get in the end zone. 2.40 to go, up by four. Defense is humming right now. We're going to go play action. Boyd pushed out, throws it back shoulder to Peoples Jones. I think we were trying to do somewhat of a of a screen there, but but Miami was not falling for it. Going to put us at the two minute warning here as well. We're going to snap it right before, get it underneath to Sanders, and we'll get five yards right before the two minute warning hits. Third and six. Boyd back. He's immediately under pressure. Gets rid of it to Ford. Ford's got the space for the first. And he gets himself across the 30. The 32. The clock did not stop, however. So we got to sort of stop celebrating there, buddy. Let's get back to the huddle. Minute 25. Boyd, quick snap underneath. It's completed again. It's Mingo. Four catches, 50 for him. We're going to conserve our timeouts. Boy with the snap, another screen. It's set up good. Ford's got plenty of space, and he is finally down at the 45. That time, we will use our timeout. 53 seconds. Miami sends four outside to Overton, and he caught that. Duran Overton is making some incredible catches right now. I thought that was for sure going to be out. And that one was just chucked in the dirt. Uh, we're just going to let it slide, right? We'll just call that a spike. I'm not sure what was what he was trying to do there because there was nobody there or running to that area. But we're just, like I said, that was a spike. It was a fancy spike. Boyd with the snap and, oh, my God. I thought that was about to be picked. I really did. Luckily, it hits the turf. Third and ten. Boyd, over the middle, wide open, Jatavian Sanders down to the 15. I'm loving it. 21 seconds left, we have one timeout to spare. Miami still with all three. Boyd, checks it down to Ford, he gets out of bounds. 
a short gain of two. I'd like to see us take one or two shots at the end zone here and then just take the three points if we can't get it. Boyd. Over the middle. Completed. Same play that got us a touchdown before. Gets us a nice gain there. We got to call a timeout here. Call timeout. There we go. Okay. I think we're just going to take the three here. I don't think uh, Madden is smart enough to know that there's enough time for an incomplete pass still. I could be wrong. Okay. Apparently, Matt, it, oh, this is either going to be really bad or really stupid. Hopefully, it's, it, or, yeah, it, probably both. Whatever. Boyd with the snap. He's going to run with it. Boyd, run, you idiot. He had a touchdown. Oh, my God. This guy is going to drive me nuts. But we'll, we'll, we still have one second, so we should still be able to get a field goal and get us a seven-point lead. But, man, that, that irritated me. He had a touchdown. He just had to run it. But Patterson puts it up, makes it 17 to 10, going in to the break. All right, halftime is over. Miami with the ball. They're going to start from the 26. They've had a tough first half for sure. Let's see what they got in the second. Immediately finds Waddle, and he'll get the first down. That's a good play for Miami right there. They, they desperately needed something to go their way. Just something, right? You just need to start somewhere. Let's see if they can build off of that. Or is this defense going to continue to hound them? Oh, a little out, uh, end around, which works. Wow. Okay, nice play design. Haven't seen that one yet today. A gain of eight. Second and two, they've got a really good chance here of just running whatever they want. They can even take a shot if they want to, but Tua doesn't see anything, and he runs into a sack, and he loses it. And Brown picks it up. Big man with ball, and he is gone for the touchdown. Holy cow, this defense has been ferocious today. The interior of our line has been getting pressure, and that one was Wanham. Wanham and Jones have been just destroying Tua in the backfield this time. We're going to end up getting ourselves a defensive touchdown from Derrick Brown. All right, Miami back on offense. Down by 14. We got ourselves a really good uh, lead right now. The, the crowd is on our side. They're feeling it. Hubbard with the handoff, and he will get four. It was Trevin Wallace on the stop. Defense has been playing out of their minds today. Tua drops back under pressure. He's going to take off. He's got space. He's got the first, and he slides down at the 48. And now they're going to go empty set. What do they got? Tua. Time running out. Fires, and it somehow is caught. And it's number 80. I'm not sure who 80 is on this, on this roster right now. There's an injury, and it's Davis, one of the linemen. Is that, um, maybe that's, no, John o. Hill is right there. He's not number 80. That one's Hill. I know who that is. He'll make the catch for seven. Miami putting a nice little drive together, which is something they desperately need. Pitch left side, and Hubbard is buried in the backfield. Simmons and Wanham both getting back there. It's going to be a loss of a few yards, third and five. Quick snap. Tua with time. Finding your open receiver. It's a fumble. Pick it up. It's a fumble. We fall at the one. Thompson with the recovery. Is it going to stand? That was such a delayed reaction. I am wondering if he was down. And yep, there it is. Booth review comes in. I, I'm pretty sure he was down. It was just waste. It was just so late for Madden to actually count that as a fumble. And yeah, okay, yep. Oh, this is a perfect camera angle. Yep, he is down. So Miami will get the ball back, and they're going to have it first and goal. That makes sense. That was a weird situation to consider that to be an actual fumble. So now it's first and goal from the one. Miami. Split back, shotgun formation, hill in motion around the back end of the, of the play. It's a handoff to Hubbard, and he is met by Thompson. 
right away. Well, it was Jacquez Green first, slowed him down, couldn't make the tackle. Thompson comes in to clean up. And now they're going to go with the fullback, and he gets in. Touchdown. It's Alec Ingold getting the Dolphins on the board for the first time since the first quarter in the end zone, and it's going to be 24 to 17 now. 6.08 to go in the third. We're back here, still up by seven. We're going to come out I formation, Judge in the backfield. Going to be a handoff to Judge, trying to get outside, cuts it back inside, but Miami had both sides covered. Siler on the stop. Going to be a, just a gain of one yard. Now it's play action rollout. Boyd throws it back shoulder. Horrible throw. That was a dumb decision. Brooks bats it away. We're lucky it wasn't intercepted again. Just calm down here, dude. Just relax. And that's what happens when he relaxes. He puts it on the money. Players get open. Peoples Jones showing it there. First down. And once again, we're in Miami territory. And off to Ford, and he is mint. <laughs> oh my God. There was nothing going to stop Chubb from getting in the backfield there. He shut that down very quickly. Ford had nothing, nowhere to go. Nothing he could do. As Boyd steps up in the pocket, he's going to run and slides down intelligently at the 42. Don't want to take any more hits. So another third down for us here. Back to pass. Boyd. He's going to run with it again. And he's got the first. Sliding at the 33. Play action. Quick throw right side. Completed and it's out of bounds. That one is Mingo. I believe that's his fifth catch of the day. Nice gain of nine, second and one. Like to see us take another shot here. Play action. Boyd gonna throw it short. It's caught by Sanders, we'll get the first down. He might have been looking downfield, but Miami may have had it covered. Just goes to the check down, takes the positive yardage, resets the downs. I like to see it. First down. Oh, Siler got his hand up there, or maybe his helmet, I don't know which one it was, but either way, it's, a, it's an incomplete pass. Second and 10. Haven't had a lot of runs today, even though we did run inside. Oh my God. That was, that was quick. Sanborn came flying through. I'm just glad he didn't fumble it. But, but yeah, now we're in a tough spot again. Third and 15. Boyd. Got to throw the ball here, Boyd. Can't do this, Boyd. And, and now we're not even getting a field goal. We're not... We're not even going to get a field goal out of this because Boyd just keeps running backwards. Oh my god, I'm I'm uh, I'm tilted right now, guys. This guy's just doing this over and over and over again today. All right, so we did absolutely nothing on that drive. We gave it right back to Miami. And they're going to start with a little dump off pass to Hubbard. There you see, we've only allowed 63 passing yards today. I don't see that as being true. I'm assuming that's including all of the sacks because there's been a lot. Five sacks Miami has, has dealt with today. But we have done a good job of keeping them in check. There has not been a lot of big, like, long drives from them. A lot of their points coming from our own mistakes with fumbles. Five and a half to go. Tua takes the snap. Fires it short, and he's got the completion. It's Jonu Smith. And it'll be enough for the first down. Get him to midfield. To a quick pass underneath again to Hill. That's going to go for seven more. Oh, are we going to get a false start here? I think so. Yes, we are. Miami gets their first offensive line penalty of the day. They've had a... They had a neutral zone infraction earlier. Second and eight. Hand off. Hubbard cutting back again and finds a huge crease to get inside the 40 and another first. 337 and ticking. Tua with the play action. Under pressure, fires it deep and it's incomplete. He wanted to take a shot, 
battle was down there and he batted it away. Double covered as well, which I like to see. I believe it was Waddle he was trying to get to. Another play action. Tua immediately going to run with it. And he is tracked down by DJ Johnson. And he'll be brought down after just a few. Third and seven. Can the defense do it again? Tua. Under pressure. Let's it go and Waddle's open. We got the pressure up the middle, but not we didn't get home. And Miami, of course, had a little bit of an underneath route. Came wide open when we didn't get the pressure we were looking for. Easy completion. And Miami, one more play here before the two-minute warning. Tua taking another shot. He's got a wide open Waddle. It's a touchdown. And Miami is going to tie things up right at the two-minute warning. We let him play around too much. Waddle gets open. And Tua does an excellent job of finding him across the field. And now we are got ourselves yet another close ending during this season. Oh boy, we had a huge return from Mobley out to the 44. Boyd takes a snap. He throws it and completes. Big hit by Miami on Sanders. Second and 10. We just need a field goal, though. We, we don't want to get overzealous here. They're sending heat. Throw it. Oh, my God. We are going to fail already. Third and 10. This is not how you start a drive to win the game. Come on now, guys. Boyd misses his target. You've got to be kidding me. Yeah, that's right. It's Miami back on offense. We decided to just be complete idiots on the last drive. Two horrible passes by Boyd led to a three and outs. And now Miami has a chance to win the game themselves because apparently that wasn't important enough to us. Second and 10. Two with the ball. He's going to run with it. And he slides down at the 26. Third and four. They call their first timeout. Snap. Pass completed again, and we're we're just leaving him wide open, guys. This is the time we didn't do this all game. This is the time to not be consistent with our coverage. Is right now. And again, perfect. Why wouldn't Chuba Hubbard beat our number one corner to the to a on, on a route? You know why wouldn't that happen? Tua going deep, and Battle bats it down. I would have really liked to see an interception there, buddy. I appreciate you not getting burnt like toast, but I really would have liked an interception there. Second and 10, Miami on the cusp of field goal range. And, well, make that field goal range because we left Tyreek Hill all alone. First and 10 now from the 30. And now it's on us to have to stop the clock and use all of our timeouts because Miami is about to just kick a field goal and walk out of here with the win. Great. There's no way. I can't believe we're about to lose this game. This is insane. First and 10, handoff again to Hubbard. He gets shut down, it doesn't matter. We have no timeouts. They are gonna call it all the way down to the like three second mark. They're gonna call the timeout. And then they're gonna kick a game winning field goal. Oh, don't tell me they're stupid. There it is. Two seconds left and they have a super easy field goal to win the game. There it is and we lose. Up by 14 going into the fourth, and we find a way to just crumble and give Miami the win. Very unfortunate. I didn't even realize this, but at some point, no, now that I think about it, I don't even remember when he got hurt. I don't remember seeing a thing, but Dalvin Ridley's out for four weeks now. Horn Labrum. So now we not only lose our young running back, Jonathan Brooks, we also lose our rookie tight end. And we sort of knew this was going to be a thing because we've seen him get hurt a few times over the course of a few games. And now he's out for four weeks. And you have to wonder, 
Does this mean that Ridley's never going to be able to be the guy, even though we know that he is super talented? Taking a look at the score here for the game. I'm not going to try to show defensive stats because I don't want to potentially have the game crash right now, but this was what it looked like. So Tua ended up finishing 123.2, 193 yards, two touchdowns, no interceptions. 21 of 26 for 80% completions. Deion Boyd. The stats lie a little bit because it looks like he had a solid game, but he was very inconsistent. He had some very bad throws. He had us lose two drives to sack fumbles when he ran backwards. So the stats may look good on paper, but we know after watching it that it was actually a very, very rough game for Deion Boyd. Rushing wise, Chuba Hubbard, they tried to rely on him and it just did not go very far. 16 for 57. Tua ended up taking on the majority of the runs for the yardage anyway. 5 for 39. Deion Boyd also having three runs for himself. Uh, Jerome Ford did have some good looks initially, but it went away as the game went on. 9 for 27. Judge, 3 for 11 as well. And going over to the receivers, Jalen Waddle just came out of nowhere in the fourth quarter and just destroyed us on like two drives, six catches, 75. Deron Overton had his big outing, though. The rookie out of Ohio State, seven for 73 and one touchdown. This guy is going to be a problem in the future. You could see it when he made the catches that he made, that he is going to be special, and I cannot wait to see how he develops. Jonathan Mingo was also very integral to our offense today, five for 59 and a touchdown of his own. It wasn't as flashy as Overton, but he has been consistent for us. So it looks as if we have two really good young receivers right now. And um, I'm, I'm at least excited to see how they grow with Boyd and hopefully Boyd getting out of his own his own issues here with, with sacks. And we know that the defense was a menace today. Draymond Jones was absolutely unstoppable. Uh, we had a, some good plays. Obviously, the big run from Derek Brown for the touchdown. I mean, that's that's not something you see every day. And then, of course, DJ Wanham. He also added to it. So over, overall, our defense played good for about, I would say, 95% of the game. Offense, I would say about 85%. Those, those fumbles were and those missed passes were huge for us, especially late in the game. We had a chance after the game was tied to go down, potentially kick a field goal or get in the end zone or run out the clock, whatever we needed to do. And we just failed. Bad plays from Boyd, um, missed passes. It was just not pretty. And now we're sitting here now back at four and four. We were above 500 for, well, about how long was this video? <laughs> uh, so cut about 20 minutes out of that. And that's how long we were above 500. And now it's back to the drawing board to see what is gonna happen with this team moving forward. We have the Bucks next week. We're gonna sim that one, of course. We're gonna get past the bye and then we'll see how things are looking in week 11 to decide what the rest of the season is going to hold for us but as for this video that's all i have for you guys thank you so much for watching as always let me know what you guys thoughts are about the team down below before you leave hit that like as well subscribe if you have not already i know there's a quite a few of you that are watching the videos but just don't subscribe it's free and it helps tremendously more than you probably think it does so i appreciate it if you would and then also go ahead and turn on that bell notification on so you know when these videos drop and i will see you guys next time